Yeah, so welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you'll find the whole of GCSE Maths explained on video all for free. This video is about areas of 2D shapes. It just says shapes, but 2D shapes, okay? So like rectangles, triangles, trapezes, parallelograms, kites, and composite shapes, which are shapes made up of different shapes like rectangles and stuff. So let's start talking about area of a rectangle. It sounds really easy, but let me explain the reasoning behind how you work out the area. Area. And it's also very important to uh, to help you work out areas of all these other shapes. So that would be interesting. So if I'm working out the area of a rectangle, what I do is basically I need to work out how many squares are in the shape. So how many squares are in the shape? Well, it's three squares tall, five squares wide. So a quick way of working out the number of squares is simply to do three times five, because I've got five three times, so which makes 15. Okay, so that's all there is to it. The height times the base, three times five is 15 centimeters squared. So because I'm measuring in centimeters, I'm saying 15 centimeters squared, which means you've got 15 square centimeters. Here's a single square centimetre, there's another square centimetre, and I've got 15 of them, that's 15 centimetres squared, or s square centimetres. Okay, now that does not mean 15 times 15, that just, it doesn't mean that at all, no reason to think that really. Well, there is, that's why I'm explaining it, but anyway, um, you got 15 of those, that's that. Now let's work out area of a triangle. This is when it gets a little bit interesting, you've got dotted lines showing you that a triangle fits inside any rect... Uh, Triangles always fit into a certain size rectangle, which can help you work out the area of the triangle. Okay, now what would the area of this rectangle be, which is around this triangle? It will be four wide, sorry, five wide and four units tall. So the area of the rectangle here is 20. Okay, but also notice this line, I'm going to use it as a dividing line to cut this triangle to two parts. This bit, it, this area, is equal to this area outside, and this area is equal to this area. Just by looking at it visually, you can see that. Okay, and that's always the case. You can always do that sort of trick. So basically, well, you can mostly, but the rule always applies, okay? That basically, the area of a triangle is half the area of the rectangle it's inside. So basically, the area of the whole tri rectangle was 20, and half of that would be 10. So generally, the rule for area of a triangle is base times height, perpendicular height, okay? So that's perpendicular to that, divided by 2. So 5 times 4 divided by 2 is 10 in this case, so that's the area of that triangle. Trapeziums, what are trapeziums? Basically any four-sided shape which has got a pair of parallel sides. Those arrows tell you the sides are parallel, okay? That means they never meet each other, they just go on forever, but they never meet. Okay, now to work out the area of a trapezium, again, you use this dotted rectangle. Now, how wide is the dotted rectangle? You can easily see the height is 4, but how wide is it? Well, you'll notice this line here is halfway between this point and there, and this line here is halfway between this corner and that corner, in terms of, you know, vertically. Um, so basically, if you want it to be halfway between there and there, and halfway between the short width and the long width, basically you're trying to find a width that's between the two widths. So what's between 5 and 7? It's 6. So uh, the width of this rectangle will be 6, and the height, as we said before, is 4. So, and you can see that this extra stuff, this is outside the rectangle, fits neatly into this gap, which is inside the rectangle. So this jumps into there as well. So basically you can see the area of the trapezium is the same as the area of this rectangle, and so, and you can work out the area of the rectangle really easily. Generally speaking, what you do is find the average of 5 and 7 to get a width which is between 5 and 7. So the average of 5 and 7 using the mean average is 5 plus 7 divided by 2, and then simply times by the height. Okay, and that area of that rectangle is the area of the trapezium. Okay, and now it's not always called the height. Sometimes you've got the trapezium different way up. That might be called the width. Well, basically, you're just interested in doing the average of the parallel sides times by the uh, perpendicular distance between the, s the parallel sides. Okay? And parallelograms. It's a type of trapezium, really, but let me just give you a special rule for parallelograms. If you want, you can use a trapezium rule, but it's quite unnecessary. What you do is, you know this width is the same as this width, right? So you do this width times its perpendicular height, again, so this height perpendicular to the base, okay, and so in this case it's 6 times 5, which is 30, okay, and that is actually, again, the area of 
the whole tri pa of the parallelogram because this extra area which is outside our little rectangle this area here fits into the rectangle perfectly so just work out the area of this rectangle and you get the area of the parallelogram so 5 times 6 is 30 that's the area of the parallelogram uh, one or two bits of information that are interesting for parallelograms of course parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides this is parallel to that because that's a double arrow that's a double arrow that's a single arrow single arrow that means those two are perpendic parallel to each other but not parallel to these two and uh, so obviously that's what makes a parallelogram but also there's some interesting things opposite angles are equal so this is equal to that um, its diagonals cross at 90 degrees and I suppose that bisects this bit is the same as that, and that bit is the same as that, but that's, forget that. Anyway, um, what else can I tell you? A kite, again, it fits into a uh, rectangle. Okay, now, you can see those two, well, this, that could jump onto that side, and this bit could jump into that corner. Okay, so you're simply doing 10 times 5 divided by 2 because by the time this jumps up there and this jumps up there, you've got half of it empty. So 10 times 5 divided by 2 is 25 and your job's done. Let's quickly talk about composite shapes. Basically, in this case, you've got two rectangles. Sometimes it's a rectangle and a circle or a triangle. and All sorts of shapes added together. And sometimes they don't tell you all the length of the sides. Just to make it interesting, eh? Um, so imagine they don't tell you this side, okay? But you want to work out the area of this shape. So you need to work out the area of the base, which is really easy. Two times nine, you're given that. But you're not told this height here, and you need to know this height and this width to work out the area of this rectangle. Now you know the width already, that's four, but you know this height is five, and you know this height is two. And they're both going straight up, so that means to complete the height, two plus what makes five? It's got to be three. So that's three tall, that's four wide, three times four is twelve, that's the area of that rectangle, two times nine is eighteen, add those two areas together, eighteen plus twelve is thirty, so the area of the composite shape is thirty. And that's it.